what advice or what three tips can you give maybe a YouTuber or a podcaster on how to grow and monetize their show and or YouTube channel? I never saw myself as being a voice for entrepreneurs. Like I, I am extremely passionate about what I do. It's like I said, a big fear of mine, but I feel like I was called like to do this. And that's how you start to win. Take me back to that moment when you did your first speaking event and throughout all the promoting you did, you only had three people show up. You talk, ah. about, you talk about how you were able to change those three people's lives. And in that moment, you knew you were working in your purpose with entrepreneurs. Yeah, so you, you did your homework. I love it. So I, uh, <laughs> I had sold my first company. I didn't know what I wanted to do next. I got invited by my country to speak at a couple of events overseas. And I thought I want to do something back home. I'm from Toronto, Canada. And uh, my first event I did with the YMCA, they had a group of entrepreneurs and they said, hey, can you come and share your story and speak to them and help? I'm like, yeah, happy to do it. And I spent, you know, a couple of weeks preparing my presentation. I was nervous. What was I going to say? And, and then I get to the event and there's only three people who are there. And my heart immediately sunk because I thought in my head I was trying to feel uh, what I was going to do next. I mean, I sold my business, you know, I had some money. Awesome. But like, how am I going to spend the next, I was 22 years old. What am I going to do with the rest of my life? I got to do something. And I thought this was going to be it. Like maybe this is my next thing. And then just total failure, right? I mean, it's a free event, three people. How am I ever going to make money at this? If only three people come and it's free. So in my head, I thought, this is never going to work. I'm never going to make money at this. This is not going to, I want it to be the thing. It's not going to be the thing. Um, and so, but I saw the three people there. So I thought I'm going to, I have to do it. They showed up. So I'm going to do it. And I prepared for it. I might as well just help them. And it felt so amazing. Mm -hmm. I, I very quickly forgot about, is this going to be a business or not? Mm -hmm. uh, the disappointment of only three people showing up. And I felt like, man, I'm having an impact on these three people. And I left feeling, I, I walked in feeling like kind of heartbreak and I left feeling filled up. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I don't know if I'm ever going to make money doing this, but I have to keep doing it because it just lifts my soul. Um, so yeah, that was my first experience, I guess, with, in, in my hometown of speaking. It was a total disaster, but I changed those three people's lives um, in that couple hours with them and I just felt like I have to keep going. I love that. And I feel that no matter what, like you knew you were doing it for a greater purpose than yourself. And how did you feel in that moment? Like after selling everything and did you feel like you were kind of getting out of your comfort zone and feeling like it's a whole new ball game for you? I don't know that I had that much perspective, to be honest. I mean, I sold my business. I was 22. Uh, I, I wasn't, I don't know that I was in thinking purpose. I was just, I didn't want to be home bored all day. I mean, I went from working every day uh, all day long, right? I mean, I spent no time with friends, nothing. I was just working my face off. That's it. That's all, that's all I knew for three years. And then, and then nothing like it was gone. My business was sold. My two partners who I built this with also went as part of the deal. So they moved to California and I'm now by myself with no partners and no, I got money in my bank, which is great, but no, like, what am I going to wake up tomorrow and do? It's like, if you didn't have your show, you didn't have your gym, and it's all gone, like, what do you do tomorrow morning? Like, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> or depression, that's what. No. <laughs> I, I, and so, I, luckily, I wasn't in depression mode, but I was in exploration mode. It's like, what am I going to do now with my life? And I said yes to almost anything. I said yes to a whole bunch of different things and, and a lot of it didn't work out or it worked out for a little bit and, and one of them was speaking. I never, I never had a goal or ambition to be a speaker. I never, I never saw myself as being a voice for entrepreneurs. You know, it, was not, <laughs> it was not part of the plan. Um, but I just said yes to a whole bunch of stuff and then that was one that, that just kind of stuck. I love that. So talk to me about the importance of being purpose driven over profit driven and how sometimes as an entrepreneur, actually most of the time as an entrepreneur, you have to work for free in order to build the momentum and get the experience. Yeah. I think a lot of people grow up with a weird relationship with money. Mm -hmm. So 
some people think money is everything. And the next person walking into my gym is going to be my next suit or be my next purse or be my next whatever. Uh, and then some people think that money is the root of all you know, evil, right? And that money is bad and that you shouldn't go after it. I think that money is important. Money is a tool and it's super important. And if you're being an entrepreneur, money needs to be in your top five. It just can't be number one. Absolutely. There's got to be something above money. But it has to be in your top five. Because if you don't figure out how to make money, then you've just got this hobby that you do in the evenings and weekends and you have to work at some crappy job your whole life. Right? And so... Yes, purpose comes above profit. And to some people, I'm preaching to the choir. And for those people, it's like, you need to learn how to make money. Like, don't just write off money as like, as someday it's going to come. You need to figure that out. And for the others who are just chasing money, it's like, no, 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 you have to start with purpose. So depending on where, you, where people are at, you know, listen to the show or the audience that I'm talking to, typically the perspective that you grew up with um, is, is amazing and is helping you, but you need more of the other side. Absolutely. And let's just say, let's give an example. If someone's starting a, let's say a podcast or a YouTube channel, right? And of course, first you have to build an audience. You have to build that momentum, put in the work. But if their goal eventually is to, for, for instance, you, you're able to monetize, you're able to grow it to over two point some million subscribers. What advice or what three tips can you give maybe a YouTuber or a podcaster on how to grow and monetize their show and or YouTube channel. So first off, I would make content, like if you're doing a podcast and you're doing an interview based podcast like this, awesome. You better first off love interviewing people. Like if you don't like talking to people, you're not going to have much success. Like for people who say, I'll do whatever it takes. You won't do whatever it, like you're going to quit and give up and you're going up against people who love doing it. So you're always going to lose. So, if you're starting a podcast that's interview based, amazing. Bring on people who you actually want to talk to. So reach out to guests, not just because they're some big name, but, but you actually care about their story and you want to ask them something. Next, make it really personal. Don't just ask the questions that you think your audience is going to care about. Treat it as a free coaching session for you. So when you're bringing somebody on, I don't, even the intro, like, it doesn't matter what the intro is. I don't need you to read my official bio. Like the best thing, the best intro that you can give is what you like about the person. Hey, I brought Evan Carmichael on today because he is whatever, whatever you like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because here's what happens. Most people will read the same intro. And I have, a, I have an intro. You can go to my website. You can find it. But if you lead your show with the same intro that everybody else has, you, you have the same intro as everybody else. Has. You have the same show that everybody else has. If you ask me the same 18 questions that everybody else asked me, there's nothing unique about your podcast. Yes. But if you make it unique to you to say, hey, Evan, I love you because uh, my show is about being unbreakable and you broke your neck on your tour last year and kept going. And that, that made, I just love you for that. Awesome. Like that's a super unique uh, intro that nobody else has given me. And I also know that you've, you know, you care about my story. You've done your, even your first question, but asking about my speaking gig and people showed up, like you've done some homework. Um, and then make it a, a, a coaching session for you. It's like, what are you struggling with? What do you need help with? Uh, and, and then you get unique content that nobody else has. And that's how you start to win. So I think a lot of people who are doing podcasts or YouTube channels, they fall into that trap of trying to be professional and trying to like do it like everybody else does. And then now you just have a show like everybody else has and you never actually win. I love that. That's powerful. Thank you so much for your insight. So you state that everyone has a Michael Jordan talent level at something. Can you elaborate on that, please? I think everybody's the best in the world at something. Like you are the best in the world at something. And most people, one, don't believe that. They don't believe they're world class at something. The idea of being world class is, uh, is for, for, for the Steve Jobs of the world and all these other people. It's not like I can't be that level. Um, or they found something that they want to be great at, but they don't chase it down enough. 
Um, and so that's, that's what I think is the world's biggest problem. People don't believe in themselves enough. It's what I'm trying to every day uh, tackle and, and take on, and I'm never going to solve it, but I wake up every day trying to solve it. And I want to gift, uh, you know, that's going to, I guess, be my legacy or what I'm trying to work towards every day is for people to wake up and feel like I could be great at something. It may not be what my mom was great at or my dad or my teachers or the people around me, right? I'm, like, I'm sure even for you, I'm sure your parents aren't podcasters. You know, <laughs> it's not what you went to school for, you know. Uh, and so that's really hard. It's hard to break the mold. It's hard to say, I'm going to do something different. It's hard to be different. But we know we want to be. You don't look at your parents and you may love them, but you don't want the life they have. You don't want to be their age and be in their spot. You want something else. But it's really hard to go off on that ledge and say, I'm going to go off and be great, like the world's greatest ex. When nobody in your circle, nobody in your town has done that. And that's why people stay small for life and never go off and accomplish great things. And that's what I'm trying to bust out. I love that. And I feel like for me, for instance, like I come from corporate America, formal education, you know, did everything right. And podcasting was kind of out of left field. Like this, everything I'm doing with podcasting is my passion. I'm extremely passionate about it. So I definitely plan on making a living from it. Um, but my goal first is to serve people. So what advice can you give our entrepreneurs who are trying to pivot from corporate America to entrepreneurship? What has been your experience with that? Uh, I'm a big fan of starting on the side and starting small. Uh, that's not necessarily everybody's advice, but I don't, I'm not the burn the boats guy. Um, so I like, uh, if you have a corporate job, awesome, keep it and start to learn something that can help you improve your skill sets. Um, ideally, you have a corporate job where you're learning something. Like if you're at a big company, I don't know how corporate, you know, we're talking about, but um, maybe if you want to start a podcast, can you transition at the corporate job to go into marketing, to go into communication, to go into something where you can transition those new skills you're going to learn? Like if you're working at Bank of America, as an analyst, maybe those skills won't serve you too much to start a podcast. But within Bank of America, can you apply to get into the marketing division or to get into communication division? That might help you better in your podcasting career. Uh, so one, try to get a job where you're learning and not just taking a paycheck. And then at home, evenings, weekends, spend the time to work, to get better, to improve, to get the skill sets that you need to grow. Um, and to bring, honestly here, so to bring the most value, how can, how can this help you specifically? Mm -hmm. Not just your audience, but you. Like, what are you struggling the most with right now that I might be able to give some insights on? So I feel that I'm at a state where I want to be able to grow. Like, I'm building, I've already built an audience and I can take it to a higher level. Mm -hmm. But it's really now the back end stuff is being able to monetize it and maybe build a online online maybe a course and even get into maybe speaking like I aspire to it but it's actually one of my biggest fears believe it or not and that's why I opened the interview the interview with that question because mm -hmm. I understand that you know it wasn't your plan but when you did it you realize like holy crap like I can do this you change yeah daily and so here's the thing now that that future for future interviews that's that extra context is what you lead with you say, hey, Evan, I've got this show. I'm building my audience. I want to leave corporate America. Have you left corporate America or you're still in corporate America? So I've been with corporate America for nine years, but since COVID-19, I just got furloughed. Got it. So I've been furloughed for the last two months. Yeah. Great. So this is it. So Instead of saying like... My mentality is I'm not going back. That's my mentality. Awesome. So this is, that should be the lead, right? <laughs> Instead of saying for people who are like this, you say, no, this is where I'm at. How do I build this up? How do I grow? Because now it's personal to you and understand that in your journey, your audience benefits as well. Mm. Like as you grow and learn and what you're struggling with and bringing on experts to help you grow and whatever you need to grow in, they're learning as well as opposed to making it mm -hmm. general. Because if you ask a general question, you get a general answer. If you make it specific, you're going to go deep. It's going to be more already like... Personable. Yeah, and the connection is already stronger yeah. between me and you. And that'll make it with your audience as well. So um, 
first off, being, being afraid is not a good enough reason. Like the fact that you're afraid to speak, at least for me, like you were talking about being unbreakable. Uh, I, I have adopted that if, if it's scary, difficult, or hard, if those are reasons that come up, it's not a good enough reason. Mm. I have to do it just because I said it. If I was you and you said, well, I'm scared, now I have to do it just because. Do it. Yeah, just because. Like even if it doesn't lead to an ambition or a goal for you, right? Now, as long as it's within your ethics and morals, like don't go rob a bank just because you're scared to do it. Great. Okay. Evan Carmichael told me no. Okay. But <laughs> most of the thing, <laughs> great. It's all recorded. But most of the things we're afraid of is other people's judgments and opinions, which is what speaking is. You're afraid you're going to get up and let people down and disappoint and forget what you're going to say and just be an embarrassment. Right. That's fine. I feel the same way all the time anyway, but that's not a good enough reason. So if it were me, I'd be looking at what's the first speaking gig I can get. Even you can't do it right now because, you know, COVID, but what's an online speaking gig you can get right now where you're not just being the, the Larry King, Oprah, like asking questions, but you're being, you're speaking on something. So can you speak at some online event that's happening? Can you speak like, can you go back to your uh, high school and see if they're doing any online classes and you can go and share your story to your high school, you know, kids that you grew up, right? Any, anything, anything that you can, I'd be like spending my time in the next week finding what kind of online speaking gig can I get and your heart's beating like crazy and that you're going to have to come up with something and, and it's just proven to yourself that you do difficult things that, that hard, scary is not, that's not a good enough reason for you not to take action. Um, so, and just like constantly, I'm constantly afraid. I think if there's nothing in your calendar that makes you afraid, you hate your life. If you look at your next week and next month ahead and there's nothing in there that makes you scared, you don't like, it just means you're photocopying the same day over. You don't like your life. You're just inside your comfort zone constantly, which people aren't happy with. Um, so that, that's just, that's great for now for speaking, but also ongoing. Anytime you say, well, I'm just scared to do it. Great. Now you have to, because you said the words, now you have to do it. <laughs> Hold yourself accountable. Yeah, yeah, just because. Like, that's a great self-check. Um, for, for monetizing, if, you, if you're building a course, that's, that's, a, that's a good potential next step. Uh, I would parlay that f- from coaching. Like, I would think, what can you coach people on first? And I would try to build your business as a coach for your audience. Like what would people pay your time for so that they spent half an hour with you? What what would they get from it or an hour with you, whether it's a one-off or every week or every month in an hour, what, what do they get? Like, what are you going to help them through and have a coaching offer? Even if your long-term ambition isn't to be a coach, because this is where a lot of, a lot of course makers and speakers fall down. Right. What's that? They get stuck. When you're on stage speaking, you're speaking to a whole bunch of individual people, mm-hmm. not speaking to the masses. And if you haven't gone through and coached individual people, you don't know what they're thinking in the back and forth because you have a message that you think will make sense. But in their heads, they're saying, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. And until you've coached people through it, you don't know what the yeah, buts are. And so when I was, I was mentoring um, a young woman entrepreneur, and she wanted to be a speaker. That was her ambition. I want to be a speaker. And I said, great, you could be a speaker. We got her a TEDx talk right away. But um, you need to coach first. I don't care if you don't want to be a coach. You need to start coaching just so that you know what message hits. So that will make you a better speaker. When you're a coach, you know what problems people have. So then you can make a better course. A lot of times with courses, you're, so many people make all this effort to put into a course and then sell nothing. Because you're, you, don't know what, you don't know what course to do it off of because you haven't gone through being paid as a coach or consultant to help people. So you start with a coaching or consulting service. Whatever people are willing to pay you for, for your time, that you see is happening over and over and over and over again. Like what, what, what would people hire you for right now in your audience? Right now, um, what I find myself doing a lot of is helping people launch their podcast. So we do have a, a full-blown studio here in Long Beach. So yeah. we do everything from post-production 
to getting them started, ready with their platforms, to even content creation in-house. Do so do you know the podcast Answer Man? No. No. Anyway, okay, awesome. So podcast Answer Man in your field, um, he was doing the same thing where he, was, he, has a, he has a podcast teaching people how to launch podcasts. And he, he does co coaching and consulting on how do you launch your own podcast. And then people would hire him and he'd fill his day with coaching gigs. And people around him, across America would pay him for coaching advice on how to start their podcast. And then he was on, he had a day where he was, uh, kept getting asked the same question of how to use whatever software to edit. I forget what, I don't know what software you use, but Final Cut this, Pro. yeah, yeah it's like how to use Final Cut Pro. And, and he basically did four hours back to back with four different people, the basics of how to use Final Cut Pro. Mm. And so now when you're thinking course, his first course became how to use Final Cut Pro because people are paying him for that knowledge mm -hmm. as opposed to you thinking, oh, well, I want to, I'm going to teach you how to set up a podcast studio, but then maybe only three people actually buy that course. Like right. you want to do it based off what people are paying you are ready to do. And that you can do as a, as a entry level. So he doesn't want to be teaching people how to use Final Cut Pro, like the basics over and over and over again. Hey, if you just care about the basics, go buy my course. If you want next level, how to do coaching, how to, how to book ass, right. Then you can hire me again for coaching. So you start coaching and then you transition that towards speaking and towards um, products. I love that. I'm going to try that. <laughs> so what I find is, like I, like I said earlier, my biggest fear, I love people, I love speaking, and I'm extremely passionate about it. But mm -hmm. what I find my struggle is, you know, even at a, as a podcast host, I can talk to you great. But for some reason, when it comes to like getting personal on a like a camera right in front of it by myself, I'm like, holy crap, like I get super nervous. Um, but I find myself now doing a lot more attending more Instagram lives. So I am getting out of my comfort zone. But is that something that you struggled with, with first starting off? Yeah, and still do. You know, like I'm, I, I always want everything I make to be the best that I've done. So uh, I was last year speaking in um, Arizona, Arizona, yeah, Phoenix, at Brendan Burchard's event yeah. and a couple thousand people in the room and the, the, I'm about to go on and, and I, I blank out as what I'm going to start with. I just totally forgot how I was going to start my speech and I have no slides when I speak. So I was supposed to speak for, you know, an hour and I got no slides and I forgot what, how I was going to start. <laughs> and I'm, I'm having a panic attack. Like my biggest fear is disappointing people. So I'm worried. Oh my God, Brendan Burchard flew me down here. Uh, you know, Dean Graziosi and Eric Thomas are on the stage and I'm, I'm going to go and just tank. And I look, the thing that saved me was I looked to the audience and said, hey, I'm not, I'm not here for me. I'm here for them. I'm here to serve, right? I'm here to, I have knowledge I can help them. And then I calmed me down. I remembered what the heck I was supposed to, to say. But leading with that, I think, is, is the message. Instead of you pulling out your phone and, and being fake, you say, I don't even know what I'm doing. Like, I'm super nervous and awkward, and this feels so weird talking to just my phone when I have a guest, I'm, I'm comfortable, but when I don't, I don't know what to do. I love you post, right? <laughs> In <perfection. Next. laughs> yeah. Like, and then, and then do it again. Like one, the, the repetition will get you better. Just like in your interviews, I'm sure your first interview suck compared to uh, yes. this episode. And I'm sure like, if you keep doing this for five years, you look back on this episode and say, wow, that sucked. Right. And it's just like, as you do more, you get better. Right. Um, I see a bunch of, you know, medals behind you on the wall and I don't know what they're for, but uh, chances races. are for what? I did a lot of Spartan races. Spartan races. So I'm sure like you had to train for that. Yeah. You don't just pick somebody off the street and say, Hey, go Spartan race. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so don't expect to be great at the beginning, but at the same time you want to be real. So if you're nervous, you say you're nervous. If, if you don't know what to say, I don't know what to say. That's an, that's enough. Like people are looking to you and say, Oh, how, you've got it all figured out. Like, no, I'm, I'm still working on it. Mm -hmm. To not feel like you have to be fake. And at the same time, know that you have enough to, to help. Like you're still growing and learning and getting better. And you're still able to help people who are behind you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. 
And oftentimes we feel like we have to be perfect and have it all figured out and not acknowledge the growth that we still have to go down. So I look at it as a staircase, like you're, you're climbing the staircase of growth that you never want to end. Like you always want to be having more growth and learning something new and getting better. And every time you take a step up, you can reach back and help somebody else climb up a step, right? And so, you know, in the podcasting world, maybe you're on step 100 and you can help people get from one to 99. On the speaking world, maybe you're at step two. So you can, right? And that's okay. Like knowing where you're at and being comfortable knowing that, uh, knowing and expressing that you're not an expert at this yet, but you're, you're trying. The willingness to try is an inspiration. You're an expert at Spartan races now. You can help people train and get their Spartan race and you know what it takes. Your first one, maybe you didn't know what you were doing and you were uh, nervous about it. Showing the journey of it, of I'm, I'm trying to do a Spartan race. I don't know if I'm going to do it. I'm actually quite nervous because I feel like I'm in good shape, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it because it's pretty rough. So I'm going to train every day to try to do it. And you take me on the journey of you learning and becoming. Um, and then as you get better at it, then you can teach more, mm -hmm. right? So I just see it as a spectrum in that maybe right now it's 25% you teaching and 75% you learning. And that's what you share. You share what you're not good at. You share what you're learning. You share, share hey, I've got Evan Carmichael coming on my channel. I'm hoping to learn about how to do this because I'm not good at it yet and I want to get better. Right. And then you do an update after like, Hey, that was the greatest show ever. Or, that sucked. I hate that guy, whatever. Right. <laughs> but like taking people through the journey of what you're doing. And as you continue down your journey, you, you now increase that percentage from 25% expert to 35% expert to 50% expert because you're learning and learning and learning and gaining more. It's the, you're unwilling to share the things that you're not great at yet. And that could be the greatest inspiration of all is showing how you're willing to get up there and learn. Vulnerability, right? Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate Don't be fake. Like what you're scared of, share. How many people can connect to, I'm afraid to be a public speaker. Yeah, I'm afraid that. Everybody. Uh, yeah. So, but at the same time, you're afraid to just pull up your phone and, and make a fool of yourself, right? For a while, when I was doing the Instagram lives, when I did my tour, um, uh, sorry, when I did a trip to Boston, I was coaching a couple guys, my camera guys, they were making content too on Instagram. And every time we made a mistake, we still said post. Like, I'm here and um, crap, post, right? <laughs> yeah, I just post. Post, next, post again, right? Like, what are you so, the, fa the fact that you're worried, you're afraid of the judgment on it, for me, it means, at least you have to do it. You got to do it. And then you slowly work that muscle like every other muscle that you slowly build up. And I love your content, Evan. Like everything that you put out, it's just, it's crazy. Like, so who were some of the people that you learned from? Like who were some of the people that you modeled, modeled from when starting your YouTube channel and even your podcast? Like, who did you learn from? Who did you look up to? Uh, so I love learning from people who've done the thing that I want to go off and do ultimately my parents are my biggest role models are on the wall behind me i'm like eight or nine in that picture i guess podcast audience can't see but i got this giant canvas uh i got five giant canvas on my wall and one of me with my parents they always taught me i could i'm evan carmichael i could do anything i believe that i can um i love modeling success and so i find people who've done the thing so when i first started youtube i learned a lot from tim schmoyer and daryl eaves who are two big like how to YouTubers mm -hmm. and I learned from them. They ended up being collaborators. I ended up speaking at their events. Uh, you know, my channel grew bigger than theirs. I mean, I learned a lot from them and that's just a default. Like if you want to enter the Spartan race, you go find somebody who's done the Spartan race and see how they did it and how they trained and how often they trained and what they ate. And you're likely going to get better success. Now, I continue to learn from everybody that I profile on my channel. Everybody that I put up, I've learned something from. That's why I put them on the channel. And um, if I haven't learned from them, we don't put them up. I love that. So out of all the entrepreneurs, the thought leaders, and great minds that you've sat down with, what, what are your key three takeaways that you can share with our audience? I want to make it personal to you. And helping you, yeah. it helps the help audience. Help me. Yeah, help me yeah, yeah. help my audience. 
So like this is this is I think a great this is a great lesson in vulnerability, <laughs> but also in making a better show. In that you make it about how to, how can you get better? How can you learn from the people that you're bringing on? And in your learning, your audience learns as well. So is that a question that you personally care about? My answer to, and if so, then why? And if not, it just sounds like a good. Then dump the question. <laughs> and move on to something else. Like if you said, "Hey, I'm really struggling with who to who to model," or "I'm struggling with how do I monetize this," or "I'm struggling with X Y Z," I'm struggling with how to deal with you know parents who hate me. I don't know, whatever, like mm -hmm. whatever that is, and then and then turn it into a coaching session. So, how does that question help you, or yeah, or does audience, it? It's not necessarily me. No. Okay, then forget it. Like okay, forget so, it. that's a great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no yeah. more questions. Here's okay. what I would do. <laughs> I would I would come up it's good to have a list of questions just so that you're prepared and you have people come on but I would be willing to if you have 10 questions on your list be willing to throw away half of them yeah or more like what you should do is when somebody when if if your guest answers a question and they say anything that you find interesting pull on that thread mm -hmm. even if it takes you way off track and you never come back to your other nine questions that's going to be the best episode with that person that you've ever had. Because that question of who are, who are three people that I've learned the most, I've answered that question mm -hmm. 20 times on different shows, right? I probably answered that like three times today on different people's <laughs> podcasts, right? And so I want you to have something unique, right? And, and so, but that's great self-awareness. And they're like, I don't really care about this question. It's more for my audience and it sounds like a good question to ask. So now you're not allowed to ever ask any of those questions that are just for the audience that you don't personally care about. I love that. I love that. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get personal. So yeah. what advice can you give me when it comes <laughs> to just growing? Like you said, I, I know you talk a lot about putting out content, right? And I love the content that you put out. And it's, it's just, you make it so, it's like a very simple concept. So I'm, I feel like I'm extremely consistent with putting out content, but, and I know you say sometimes that even you put it out, even when you feel like nobody is watching, right? You, you need to be around people who are pushing you into massively uncomfortable zones. Mm -hmm. So I look at you and I see somebody who is ambitious, who wants to chase down your dreams, who is probably in your family, close friend circle, the most ambitious person that you know. You've got bigger dreams than what your parents had. Oh, for sure. And that's a great place to be, but it also sucks because yeah. you're the one building other people up and pushing them, but who's pushing you? From, from a place of love, from a like, I love you, you suck. Let's go. Like, you're barely living your life, right? Not from a, a jealousy, hate, like, perspective, but from deep love for what you're doing. So that's what you need more of. And I would approach it in two ways. One, your guests. Kind of like what we just did here, where we started off and I was playing your game and then I flipped it and said, hey, I don't want to answer your questions. I'm going to play a different game because I want you to do more, right? Right? And so bring on more guests like that who you have a personal affinity for who you think might push you and then you you at least open the door for them to push you right by leading with your story and your problems you may not always get this kind of result but at least you're creating the environment for it to happen right i kind of force this <laughs> on well, you i appreciate it i really do. and i know i know you know you got you got some tears and i know it's i know it's out of love and and um and happiness for like what you can make uh, but that's great. Like, this is the journey. This is what you need more of. You need more of those people around you to, to push you and say, you're capable of so much more than what you're doing, as opposed to just cheering you on and saying, man, look at, look at everything you've done. Um, and then I would do it from, so that's your guests. Like, use your podcast as your platform to do it. Look for people who are putting out new books. Look at, like, any, any books that you love. Go track down the author and say, hey, I love your book. Uh, I'm struggling with X, Y, Z. 
and they're the expert at it, right? Like you can ask me some things. If you're asking me about a Spartan race, I know zero. Like I'm not the guy for Spartan races. I've never run one of my, I got nothing for you. But other stuff, speaking, you know, shows I can help with. Um, and then I would also look at, so you, I don't know how, how often you're doing your show, but if you're doing like a once a week kind of thing, um, then it's tracking down again, the, the experts and guests that you care deeply about. And then two, surrounding yourself with what I call aspirational mentors. So like Steve Jobs pushes me, even though I've never met him, right? This is my office. Again, podcast, you can't see, but I've, I've got a giant Steve Jobs. I'm looking at him right now. It's like his, his head is like eight times the size of mine. And he's looking at me all day long. <laughs> and, and I make my videos on my channel for me because I... I want to be around people who are thinking bigger and pushing me because I'm the same way. I'm, I'm the most ambitious person that I know from my friend circle in my family. And so every time I think I'm thinking big, I got this big, bold vision. Um, I see an Elon Musk video talking about a backup plan for humanity and realize, holy Christ, I'm thinking small. <laughs> and, and like, and I think that's good. I think, I think that. um, you should have that feeling of I'm not doing enough yet. Not, not constantly live there, um, but, but that pushes you forward to say, I can do a lot more than what I'm capable of. Um, now for extra practice here, like take, while I was going through that four minute monologue, uh, <laughs> you, you started tearing up, bring the audience in to why. I feel that, like, I, I am extremely passionate about what I do. Mm -hmm. um, it's, like I said, a big fear of mine. But I feel like I was called, like, to do this, you know? And I, I'm still trying to figure out why. Because I feel that all the way up until launching my podcast, August 23rd of last year, I literally had my whole life planned out. Everything. Like, I was in the police academy. And at the same time, working corporate job, I got my associates, my bachelor's. I did everything what society wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. But I found myself really unfulfilled. Like I wasn't bringing, like I wasn't making an impact in anybody's life. And I think that's what really called me to do this is because like I genuinely want to make a contribution and change people. And I know that this is a huge fear, but it's something that God is saying, you have to do it. And that's why I'm doing it. And I love it. Like, I genuinely love it. But I feel like I need to, like you said, I need to open up more. I need to be more vulnerable. But it's a, it's a weakness of mine. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, yeah. It, but I really appreciate this. Like, just how many, how many episodes have you done? What episode is this? This, so your season two, I have 25 episodes for season one, and I already okay. have about 40 episodes recorded for season two. So this so is your, like... Your season, six, you're at episode 20, season two, and okay. I have 15 non-published episodes right now. Got it. I'll be so, <laughs> listen, this is, this is your greatest episode to date, and, and not because I showed up. It was because you showed up. Like I did a little bit. I just kind of pushed a little tiny bit. Yeah, pushed me off. But, but yeah, but you showed up, right? Like, and it doesn't mean that you need to cry on every episode, but there's nothing wrong with, with crying when it makes sense. But making it personal and letting your uh, guest see that it's personal, that you actually really value them. A lot of times, like, I, listen, all day long, I'm doing interviews and podcasts today. And... A lot of people is just, it's just work. It's just work for them. Yeah. But you can tell that you actually really deeply care. Um, and for a lot of people, they do care, but they never really express it. So saying, hey, I, I, I want to have an impact. I want to make a contribution. For, there's so many people who, have, um, who can relate to that story of doing what society wanted them to do or their parents or whoever wanted them to do. And they were too afraid to, to take the leap. You took the leap. Like you're doing it. You don't know what you're doing in terms of figuring it all out. You don't have, you know, where you kind of want to go. You can't give the prescription yet of, of what to do. But 
the, the willingness to try is an inspiration. The willingness to say, I don't want to live this life anymore. I want to be able to have a contribution and feel like when I wake up, the life I'm living matters. And so I'm going to take this leap into podcasting as my next step. That is an inspiration that might encourage somebody else to go off and be a dancer or, or, or ask that girl out. Right, right. Or whatever, because they're tired of, of living somebody else's life, right? And if you take people into that journey of what you're afraid to do, then now, now you're sharing like 5% expert and 95% journey. But as you go on that journey, if you, if you every day were doing something that you were afraid of and conquering those fears, you'll start gaining that 5% expert to 10% expert to 15 to 20 to 30, right. and you shift your content. But right now, you're an expert at how to make a, a podcast. Awesome. That's not really what you want to be an expert at. That's like a means to an end. You want to help people figure out how they can make a contribution and feel like their life has, has meaning and significance. Help people make an impact. Mm -hmm. I feel like right now, this is just the platform of just building it and, and using my voice. You know, And like you said, I need to get more out of my comfort zone and express more and be a lot more vulnerable. And I feel like it's, it's definitely something that I'm being pulled to do. So I just need to surrender and just let it go. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, I mean, and this is it. You started. Hey, happy birthday. We just, uh, this is it. You just did it. So, so homework is, you know, weekly guest that you are inspired by and you're going to make it only about you. And in that is actually like, it's easy to think this is selfish for me just to make it about me. Sometimes I do feel that way. It's the most selfless thing you can do. Like, this is your best episode ever because you showed up. And in that vulnerability, people will now relate way more to you than they did before, right? So it's actually the most selfless thing that you can do is make it about you and share your journey. So weekly guests that you actually deeply care about and you're only going to make it about you and lead with why you care so much about them and turn into a coaching session that you're going to open up about something that you're trying to get better at and learn at. Again, it doesn't necessarily need to mean you're crying every episode, yeah, but, but, but like, or it could be just passion, right? Yeah. Like emotion. If no emotion comes out from you in an, in an episode, that episode sucks. <laughs> Yeah. Right. But like, it could be laughing. It could be passion. It could be crying. It could be like, it could be a mix of things, but there's gotta be emotion as opposed to, Oh, that's really interesting. And then next question, which is what everybody does, right? This right. is where you could win. So weekly guests that you deeply care about and you make it a free coaching session for you Two is I'd, I'd be, uh, immediately looking for, for 10 online speaking gigs that you can do just because you're afraid and you'll talk about almost anything. Like you could talk about podcasting to tons of different potential people. You could go back and talk to your high school. If they're doing like all kids are going now online classrooms. Can you come and share your story? Right. You could talk about Spartan racing, like anybody who's doing any kind of online summit or Instagram live, you go out and you now pitch yourself and get your next 10 speaking gigs. That'll be free. That'll be totally terrifying. And then as you go through, it's like, I just did that, <laughs> right? Like, I said, you're not that bad, Yeah. right? I could do that. I was so terrified of this thing, and I just did that, right? Um, so, so weekly guests that you care about, 10 speaking gigs to start working on now, and then, and then I would challenge you to do a daily uh, series of Instagram videos, five Instagram stories a day where you're taking me behind the scenes of your life and what you're – excited about not some PR fake version yeah. crap, but real life, your wins that you're pumped over. Like even the any, here's a trick. Anytime you're feeling emotional about something, heightened emotions, film. Mm. So like get off this set film, however it made you feel, whether it's gratitude, love, pain, all of it, <laughs> like film, heightened emotion, film even if the words don't make sense yet, because that helps you practice how to get emotions out in a verbal way, which you'll need if you're going to be a great speaker. Right. So that's your homework. Those three things. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm, you challenged me. I appreciate you, Evan. I really do. And thank you so much for this. So first I'm, I'm pumped. 
<laughs> no, but I really do. And I'm truly honored that I had you on the show. And I would love to just pick your brain more and really learn from you any way that I can. Episode 250. <laughs> Let's do it again. Definitely. We will, for sure. I'm pumped. You're going to... You could be a whole new person by 250. I appreciate it. I'm so excited. It. If you want to see another awesome interview I did, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.